Welcome to this VetVine tutorial on uveal cysts. The VetVine Specialty Consulting Service was presented this case of a five-year-old male neutered golden retriever that had presented on its routine annual exam with the complaint that um, there had also been a recent change in the appearance of the left eye. Physical exam findings were otherwise normal and photos um, of this patient's eye uh, were submitted. And you can see in this uh, photograph of the patient, uh, the left eye in question, uh, these areas here. As we take a closer look of that um, eye, we can see uh, the area of concern uh, that was noted, uh, namely uh, the appearance of this pigmented um, lesion, this, and possibly that as well. Uh, for orientation purposes, this right here is flash artifact from the camera. So as we look at this photo, it's, it's difficult to say with certainty what uh, these uh, changes are and where they're located. Um, certainly we can say that they're uh, in the anterior segment or on the surface of the eye, but remember the eye is a three-dimensional structure and without a little more perspective um, in this exam, um, we can't say truly what these are or where they're located. So with that, we want to remember always that this eye is of three dimensions and as we examine an eye uh, grossly, we want to make sure that we do so uh, from all angles, not just looking at it straight on, as was demonstrated in that photograph, but also to um, look at it from different views. Namely, uh, when you're examining the eye, you want to make sure that, again, you're not just looking at it straight on, but also um, alter your positioning uh, relative to the patient. So whether it's to also look at it from the side, uh, looking down from up and up to down so that you can get a true appreciation of, of all dimensions of that eye. In addition, uh, whereas many people keep the light source uh, angled in from the, their viewpoint, you also want to make sure that um, you shine the light in at a different angle of incidence relative to your viewing of that patient. And this will help to uh, take advantage of uh, the properties of light bouncing off of structures to eliminate them in a way that uh, gives you a different visual perspective of the structures of the eye. So again, we always want to make sure that we're um, taking advantage of those principles to help us in making sense of what we are seeing in our patients. So if we look at this eye uh, in cross-section, usually as we lo look across the anterior chamber, uh, we see uh, a space that's clear and colorless and filled with aqueous humor. But as uh, we looked in this patient uh, from across the eye, um, again, remember what it looks like straight on. As we looked across the anterior chamber from the side, we could actually see that these structures were sitting in the anterior chamber. And actually, when you moved the patient's head, this uh, lesion was free floating. It was determined, you could see it actually um, floating in the anterior chamber. It would pop up and settle down again. And uh, this um, helped us to arrive at the diagnosis of an iris cyst in this patient. Now, I say an iris cyst, uh, and I know that because it was free floating in the anterior chamber, but in some instances, they won't float. And to differentiate uh, this from its primary differential, that being um, a mass effect, a, a melanocytic uh, neoplasm, iris melanoma, um, one other thing that you can do to try to uh, determine if it is cystic is, again, to take advantage of the principles of retroillumination, that if you shine the light, uh, not necessarily directly at the lesion, but a very bright, intense, focused beam um, on another structure within the eye, uh, light will bounce off and back and help to retroilluminate the structure. And in fact, in this photograph, we're actually seeing evidence of that. You can see that this uh, is a little bit overexposed because we're shining a very bright light onto this eye. Uh, you want to make sure you do this in a dark room uh, so that you can actually appreciate the retroillumination that occurs. But you can see that light is bouncing off and uh, retroilluminating the structure. And I can say that because although the, this, uh, wall, the wall of this cyst is pretty densely um, pigmented in its periphery, in the center here, there's um, relatively less pigment in the wall of that cyst, and you can actually get a sense of the iris color through it. So we're actually seeing iris um, through that cystic lesion. So again, uh, another principle that will help you in your examination techniques. Now, iris cysts um, can be free-floating in the anterior chamber, as we've just seen. Sometimes we can see them 
peeking through the uh, pupillary margin, or um, on a fundic exam or posterior se segment exam, we can actually see ciliary cysts as well, so st cystic changes um, in the area of the ciliary body. Um, these are generally, again, fluid-filled, but in some instances, we can actually see hemorrhage or hemorrhagic uh, cysts in this area as well. If uh, on your clinical exam you're still not able to differentiate whether it is cystic or a true mass effect, uh, the ophthalmologist has a few other um, instruments at their disposal to help in differentiating uh, a cystic lesion from a mass effect, uh, that being a slit lamp by a microscope that provides much more magnification and uh, a stronger light source, um, or ocular ultrasound, which uh, can help to differentiate a cystic lesion uh, from a solid mass effect in the eye. With respect to treatment, uh, oftentimes we don't treat these unless we feel that they are interfering with vision, which is rare. Um, or if we feel that the patient um, is at risk for developing uh, issues with uh, intraocular pressure because of uh, multiple cysts being present. Um, and in those instances, we can elect to treat those either by aspirating these cystic lesions um, using some magnification to assist us um, or the use of a laser to uh, basically rupture these cysts within the eye. Um, again, many of these go untreated, but uh, we do have these resources available to us um, if it's deemed uh, appropriate for the patient. After these cysts collapse, whether they collapse naturally or uh, we have done so surgically, the remnants of that sac uh, will remain in the eye. Um, so we will oftentimes see adhesions of uh, these uh, lens ruptured cysts on the anterior lens capsule in the form of some type of pigment dispersion, or uh, if they collapse in the anterior chamber, oftentimes they'll wind up um, up against the corneal endothelium and we'll see some pigmented uh, areas um, in the corneal endothelium of the affected eye.